you already know the basics of what Call of Duty Black Ops is. If you've played any of the last few games in the series, you know what sort of action to expect. You probably understand how the multiplayer works too, with its perks and weapon attachments and kill streaks. The majority of that stuff is still present in Treyarch's latest release, but there are some ambitious differences to be found around the edges of that core action. It doesn't always hit successfully, but there's enough cool stuff in Black Ops to freshen it up a little bit, and if you're already on board with a style of action, it'll keep you busy for another year. The story in Black Ops campaign mode is probably the most dramatic shift in this year's game. Rather than jumping between a bunch of different soldiers and attempting to weave a story out of disparate elements, Black Ops largely sticks with one guy, Alex Mason. The game opens with Mason being interrogated, and much of the game's action is positioned as a flashback as he recalls his various missions from the interrogation chair. And Mason has been a busy guy. The game opens in Cuba and puts you on a mission to kill Castro. This, for reasons I won't spoil for you, leaves you locked up in a Siberian prison. It's here that you meet Viktor Reznov, the chatty Russian that debuted in Treyarch's last Call of Duty, World at War. From there, you're off to stop communism, be it in Russia, Vietnam, or anywhere else you can find it. The locations and your reasons for being there are usually pretty interesting, but a lot of the particulars of the story could have been better. I found a lot of really hokey moments throughout the game, especially when it starts trying to weave various conspiracies together and place Mason in the background of actual world events. Secretary McNamara? Your reputation precedes you, sir. Step on it. The multiplayer has been rebalanced and tweaked, but the basic experience isn't dramatically different from what you're used to. Headquarters, as it turns out, is still headquarters. Different weapons impact your mobility more directly this time, though, so lugging around light machine guns and rocket launchers will slow you down a little more dramatically than it has in the past. Also, the entire level and weapon unlocking progression has been reworked with the addition of a new currency system. So as you level up, you'll now unlock the ability to purchase weapons, perks, attachments, weapon camo, and, well, just about everything else. This means you can choose to spend your COD points however you like and unlock the weapons that you'll actually use rather than being forced to unlock sniper rifles and pistols that might not fit with the way you actually play. The downside to this is that by the time I had reached level 20, I felt like I had unlocked just about everything that mattered for my style of play, so the thrill of earning more experience and unlocking more stuff fell by the wayside, leaving me with nothing to look forward to. I would have liked to have seen some new modes in the team-based multiplayer, but all of the new stuff comes in the form of Wager Match, which is a set of four gameplay types for up to six players. These feel like little basic mods to a standard deathmatch, such as Gun Game, where you all start with basic pistols, but you automatically level up to another gun after each kill. Or One in the Chamber, where each player starts with only one bullet, but you earn a bullet for killing another player, making knife kills pretty important. These modes force you to wager your earned COD points, and if you don't finish in the top three, you're not getting any of that money back. It's a neat twist that will be fun to return to from time to time, but the larger team battles that have become the hallmark of the franchise are still the big draw in Black Ops. The Zombies mode also returns in Black Ops with a pretty funny new mission that doesn't unlock until you complete the single-player campaign, making for two maps overall. This four-player cooperative mode is largely the same as it was in World at War, though the way they figure out a way to cram Nazis into this mode this time around is awfully contrived. I didn't much care for the Nazi zombie mode in World at War, and I don't much care for it here either. It's especially weak compared to last year's Spec Ops mode, which is noticeably absent. Black Ops is largely successful, and it's definitely better than Treyarch's last Call of Duty. But the minor changes to the formula don't freshen it up as much as it probably needs at this point. And whatever cool points the story earns for traversing the globe and including Ice Cube and Ed Harris in its voice cast are brought back down again by cliched moments, like the part where you're heading up a river during the Vietnam War while a Rolling Stones song is played, or, well, the inclusion of Sam Worthington in the voice cast, who turns in such a poor performance as Alex Mason, that you're left wondering if Mason is supposed to be Australian by the end. But today's the day we succeed. Those of you who just need something new from the Call of Duty franchise will be satisfied, but I can't help but feel that the whole series needs a redesign as dramatic as the one found in Call of Duty 4 if it's going to continue to matter for much longer.